Uh, th this is a huge, huge problem. Uh, indeed, I have, I have, you know, Shior and mine have to go for several hours, so we don't, we don't have time to, to cover everything right now. Uh, as you correctly note, this is not the first time we face this problem. We had this issue with Gilad Shalit. Although Gilad Shalit, quite literally, a thousand terrorists were released in exchange for, for him. It was a thousand to one. Here, Hamas is very, very generous. Uh, all they require is three for one, right? For, for the 50, they get 150. I'm sure they'll be nominated. This is maybe not even a joke. They'll be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for their humanitarian gesture in releasing their 50 hostages. Um, you know, <laughs> I actually think that may happen, but okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the Shaila always is this. The Shaila always is, on one hand, pigeon shvuyin, ransoming captives, a great mitzvah. You even sell a Sefer Torah for pigeon shvuyin. You sell a shol, you do whatever you can. Pikuach nefesh, saving people whose lives are endangered every single second. So of course, your initial reaction might be, we have to do whatever we can to save these lives. But the problem is, by releasing terrorists back into either our population, like in Gilad Shalit, or back to Hamas, or whatever it would be, what you're doing is you're creating dangers for other Jews. In the Gilad Shalit case itself, we already know that at least one of the terrorists who was released in that deal was very instrumental in planning the October 7th massacre. So the question becomes, are we obligated or are we even permitted to save lives in a way that, will, that may endanger future lives of even a larger number? Right, we're saving, let's say, 50 people, or let's say, Baruch Hashem, uh, 200 people. Let's, let's assume we'll save 200 people. We might be endangering thousands of more people. Right? So this is a huge machlokas. It's actually based on a Mishnah in Gittin. The Mishnah in Gittin says that we do not ransom hostages for more than their economic value as slaves. We don't, we don't pay exorbitant ransoms. Lest we encourage more hostage taking in the future, and uh, in, the, in this case, you have two ideas. Number one, you're encouraging hostage taking if they could get released. And number two, you're actually creating a danger in the release of the terrorists. See, there are two different points here. One is you're encouraging further hostage takings because they get something out of it. Number two, you're endangering the population by the release of the terrorists. So the simple meaning of the mission in Gittin would be this would be forbidden. However, uh, Tosvos brings a shita that the whole mission is only talking about a kidnapped victim whose life is not in danger. But when it comes to pikuach nefesh, we have to look at the people who are presently in danger because they're in vadai sakana and the future population is only a suffolk sakana and the vadai trumps the suffolk. And the whole Mishnah is only talking about kidnappings that do not involve pikuach nefesh. Now, the Ramban explicitly argues, and he says, it's a Dover Pashat, that even if the hostages have to die, you don't endanger the future populations by releasing terrorists or giving into ransom. So it's a huge, huge machlokas, and all I can tell you is that contemporary gedolim were divided over this very issue. Ravaji Yosef wrote a famous tshuva uh, going all the way back to Entebbe. Now, Entebbe, at the end of the day, did not involve uh, terrorist exchanges. Entebbe had the raid. But, but the government was contemplating a deal. Maybe it was just strategically they were just saying they were doing it. And Ravaja was asked, and Ravaja uh, said it was mutter because pikuach nefesh overrides the chashat. In other words, present vadai sakana overrides the speculation of future sakana, because after all, maybe the terrorists will be disabled, maybe they'll die, you know, etc. So it's only a suffolk, so you've got to deal with the vadai over the suffolk. And uh, Rav Ovadja writes that Rebel Yashiv was maskim. I don't think we have a tshuva from Rebel Yashiv, but Rebel Yashiv was maskim to this. Uh, other gedolim were against it. Rebecca Kamineski said, you can't do that because you're endangering a population and you cannot do that. So it is a big, it, it is a huge, huge uh, machlokas. Now, I will say one thing. I do think that on one level, the hostage, this type of hostage deal might be a little more acceptable 
halachically than the Gilad Shalit thing, because the point is, we're releasing the terrorists back to Hamas, but then we're going to continue the war. Me meaning, in the case of Gilad Shalit, the problem was, you're releasing these thousand people, and there's no active war going on to eradicate them, so they're going to just go back and, and do the terrorism again. Here, maybe that's less of a concern, because Israel is going to be resuming the war. I mean, in a way, it's, it almost sounds kind of stupid, meaning, uh, we're going to give you back your people, then we're going to try to kill them. Uh, okay, but uh, that's what it is. So it could be when you're in the middle of an ongoing conflict, maybe there's more of a hazard for that reason. But, again, according to Rav Ovadia and Rav Yashav, even the Gilad Shalit thing was mutter, because he was in Vadai Sakana, and Vadai Sakana uh, over um, rules the Suffolk Sakana that you're putting people into. Okay, so it's, it was a little confusing, I understand, but... Uh, from a, from a human and emotional level, this is an excruciatingly difficult decision. It really is. Because what do you tell a parent of someone, you know, their child is a captive? What do you tell them? Or their, or their parents, or their, or their children, or their siblings? Uh, according to some postkim, the answer is, you know, if they have to die, they have to die because we can't endanger the war effort. But other poskim do allow it. They say, Rebel Yashav allowed it, Rebel Vajah allowed it, and, and the like. You know, one thing that really, I mean, it rips my heart every time I hear it, is just to imagine what the hostages are going through. <coughs> um, when they found uh, the body of, I think it was an eight-year-old, a, a, a young girl. So the father's reaction is, Baruch Hashem that she's dead. Because at least I know She's not going to be abused. So that's how bad it was, in which you were grateful that the person, your child, was dead, because at least they're not going through something even worse. So we, we have to really understand how difficult this situation is, how tragic this situation is. And therefore, it's understandable why the postcom looked for ways in which we could try to secure their release, even though it creates a real problem that, that you've identified.